Hey, Timothy Unkert here. I've got a default install of Emacs. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to customize Emacs without having to write ELISP for the most part. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to maximize Emacs on startup. Now there's a way I can do that. So if I do Alt X and I do customize option, I can then type default frame and then I can tab and I see that the sole completion is a list. Okay. So I can go here and I can insert something here and I need a parameter. So I'm just going to insert the parameter full screen and then the value is going to be maximized. Okay. I'm going to just click right here. I'm just clicking apply and save. So you notice down here it says wrote home tunker.emacs. So it created a .emacs file and wrote the elips for me. Okay. So now I can close this out. And if I restart here, you'll see it maximizes on startup. Okay. Another thing I don't really find that I need is this toolbar because I never use it. Right. So it's just kind of taken up real estate. So I can get rid of that. I can go to options here and I can go to show hide up to toolbar and click none. Okay. So now it goes away for this session of Emacs. But if I want that saved for future sessions, what I need to do is go to options and then just save options. Okay. And you'll see again, it says wrote home tunker.emacs. Okay. So it's written the file. So let's close this out again and let's restart. Okay. All right. And we restart. We have no toolbar. So we have a full screen uh, Emacs with no toolbar. We're getting closer. But you know, one thing here is that this is really close to the edge here. So there's something I can do about that. I can run Alt X, customize option. And I'm going to do fringe mode. Okay. And I'm going to go here for a value and we're going to go look down. And what I want to do is a specific width. Okay. And the default is zero. I want something fairly good. So I'm going to do 20 and click apply and save. And you notice all the text shifted over and over here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's shifted over as well. So the text isn't going to span the full screen. It's not going to be all the way up against the edge of the screen. It's going to have uh, some padding on the side of the screen so your text isn't jammed against the side. So that's a cool thing. All right, another thing that's kind of cool, if I go to Customize Option and I go to Package Archives, and there's no match. Let's, let's hit a tab and see. So, okay, so sometimes it's a little weird. So I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to restart it. Sometimes it gets a little bit weird about the package archive, which I'm not sure why it's doing this. If you know, please comment in the comment below. So I'm going to customize option. Let's try this again. And it's only giving me that sole completion. Why is it doing that? Um, let's enable the packages at startup. And maybe then it'll allow me to do that. So let's go here and do Alt X, customize option. And let's see if we get another completion. And to find out these completions, I'm just saying tab. Okay, so we needed to enable the packages at startup. Okay, so that's good. So now what I can do is package archives here. And you'll see that we have ELPA added by default. Okay, but let's say I want to add MELPA. Okay, well, I can go here and click insert. Type here my package name, MELPA and do HTTPS uh, colon forward forwards, two forward slashes, uh, melpa.org, and then we just do slash packages, just like that. And then I'd click apply and save. And now I've got melpa as my packages. So I can now do package list packages and install from melpa. Let's install a theme. So let's do package list packages, okay? 
and it's going to take a moment. It's going to load all the packages. It's contacting Elpa and Melpa. Okay, so we're just going to wait a second, and then we're going to install the Dracula theme. Okay, and so it says package refresh is done. So I'm going to do package install, and then it's going to take a moment because I'm filming too. Uh, it takes us a moment. And then uh, this is typically faster when I'm not filming. So I'm do Dracula and hit a tab, and the only completion is theme. So it goes ahead and it installs the Dracula theme. Now let's say I wanted to start the Dracula theme on startup. Well, I can do that. I can do Alt X, customize themes, and I can go down here and check Dracula. And the first time I check it, it's going to ask me if I really want this to load because it can run eLisp. So it's like kind of like a security thing. So I'm going to say yes, yes. And I want to enable it for future sessions. And then I'm going to go here, right here, and save theme sessions. And I clicked on this, and it just said custom theme saved for future sessions. Cool. So now if I do Control-X, Control-C, and I go back and I start it back up, We've got the Dracula theme enabled from the start. Okay. Now I did say that you pretty much are not writing any ELISP except a little bit. Okay. So let's do another, let's do package list packages, and we're going to install another package. And to do this, I'm going to just go to the repository here. So let's, this package that I want to install is WC mode. Uh, I'll just search for WC mode Emacs. And we'll see if I scroll down, I want to find the actual repository. Uh, so I want to do, is it, oh, oh, yep, here it is right here, top. Uh, so I want to find the GitHub repository because that gives you some directions. So we'll see here that they're giving us some specific directions here. Okay, so we've listed our packages. And now I'm going to do package install, okay? And I'm going to install the package WC mode. Now, this is only available in Melpa, not Elpa. So you're going to have to add the package archive for Melpa. So I'm going to go ahead, click, and install that. Said, uh, And it went ahead, said total one file compiled. But if I try to run WC mode, so if I do Alt-X and try and run the command WC mode, Ah, it's enabled. So it didn't make me do it. That's weird. Uh, so let's restart. <laughs> so maybe maybe we don't have to write any uh, Emacs list here. Um, but actually, let me show you something that's a shortcut that we can write. Oop, I opened two windows there. All right. So um, sometimes it's made me do this required WC mode. But let's see and go to our .emacs file, which is what's getting written when we run all this stuff. And, okay, so let's just try WC mode here. Okay, so it is it is working. Okay, so it's enabled. But let's say I wanted to do a keyboard shortcut. Now I really don't have to write my own ELISP here. I'm just going to look here and look at this suggested setting. It says global set key, this forward slash C, C, W, which means control C and then W will toggle WC mode. So I'm just going to put this, and I'm going to just paste this in here uh, at the bottom. And I'm going to say, uh, set up for WC mode. Okay, and I'm going to save it, and I'm going to quit. Okay, and let's restart it. Okay, so we restarted it. We're in the welcome buffer. I don't know why you'd want word count mode here, but we could enable it. So I'm going to do control C W and you'll see WC mode enabled in the current buffer. I'll do control C W WC mode disabled in the current buffer. So now I've got a keyboard setting. So the point is you can customize a lot of the stuff in Emacs without writing the ELISP. And what you can do is just go install a package and then look if you need to add something. Okay. Let's try Emmet for instance. So let's do package. Uh, package, no, package list. I was spelling it wrong for some reason. Package, package list packages. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and refresh our package list, 
And now I'm going to do Alt X, do package install, and I'm going to do uh, let's install emit mode. Okay, so we're we're good. We're we've installed it. Let's do Control XD here. Let's go and create a directory. Let's call it HTML. Let's go here and let's create a file called test.html. All right, so we've got a new file, and if I do Alt X emit mode. It's enabled in the current buffer. So I can just do an exclamation point and get some HTML framework there. So point is, this is pretty nice. Uh, you can go through and pretty much customize your Emacs with customize option and a few other settings uh, without writing ELIS. I've written a blog post on this, which elaborates a little bit more in detail. If you want to check it out, I'll leave the link. Uh, both on the screen and in the description. If you like this video, please give it a like as it really get, helps it get out to more people. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.